Hi. I'm part of a team of scientists at the University of North Carolina who's trying to develop therapeutics for Rett syndrome. Now, the idea behind our approach is really quite simple. Rett syndrome is caused by mutations of the MACP2 gene. But it turns out that every cell in your body carries two copies of the MACP2 gene, one of which is active and the other of which is inactivated or silent. So that means that if one of the two gene copies is mutated, then roughly half the cells in your body are carrying an active mutation of MECV2, and the other half of the cells have a, a normal copy of MECV2. So the approach that we're taking is to try to turn on the second backup copy of MECP2 with the expectation that if we can turn on the dormant copy of MECP2, this can replace functions that are lost in cells that are normally carrying the active mutation of MECP2. The way we do this is we've taken advantage of a MECP2 gene reporter developed by Adrian Bird. So the idea is that when the MECP2 gene copy is turned on, cells will glow, they'll fluoresce. When the MECP2 gene copy is turned off, then the cells won't glow, they'll be dark. So we take advantage of this tool and we'll plate out hundreds of thousands of neurons in 384 well formats. Then what we can do is we can use sophisticated robotics to add a different drug to each one of these wells on a different well plate to see if we can make the cells glow. So we're using neurons, which are the cells in your brain, and we're hoping that we can find drugs that can turn on the dormant copy of MECP2. And our hope is that we can screen over 25,000 compounds over the next couple of years. And through this type of high throughput screening, we can find a drug that can turn on the MECP2 dormant copy and hence be a potential treatment for Rett syndrome. This research effort requires lots and lots of scientists. So we're working with three large labs at the University of North Carolina. We're working with my lab, which has expertise in neurons. We're working with the lab of Terry Magnuson, which has expertise in the X chromosome. And we're working with the lab of Dr. Brian Roth, who has expertise in drug discovery. So in fact, he is the director of the National Institute of Mental Health's Psychoactive Drug Screening Program. So it's incredible expertise that's normally only found in pharmaceutical companies. I should also say that this approach uh, is even too big for one university. So we're collaborating with other laboratories across the nation, including laboratories from MIT, from Harvard, from that Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center in Seattle, uh, at the University of Massachusetts in Worcester, and uh, at the University of Pennsylvania. So together, all these labs are sharing their information, and we're trying to learn from each other's experiences so we can increase the chances of finding a therapeutic. So we hold regular meetings uh, by phone, and also we hold yearly meetings in person. So the, the most recent meeting was in May, and all of us got together to discuss our successes and some obstacles we face so that we can try to fine-tune our research approach. So this requires uh, an incredible amount of money, and it also requires an incredible amount of organization. So we're heavily indebted to the Rett Syndrome Research Trust, which has helped to uh, fund all this research, or has actually solely funded all this research, and has also worked to coordinate all the different labs working together to try to develop a, a Rett Syndrome treatment. So it really is my hope that we can find a drug that, be, be, that can be given to individuals with Rett syndrome so that we can turn on the dormant copy of MECP2 and then hopefully make neurons in the brain healthy and able to form proper connections and thus treat Rett syndrome. So I'm really optimistic for the future of Rett syndrome and I hope to be a small uh, part of a large team that's working to develop new therapeutics.